So, we will continue our discussion on transonic flow over a wedge with upper body. Where we are considering a wedge which is extended <coughs> and our approximation. So, that we are within the framework of small perturbation theory that a mean theta is small. as theta increases the accuracy of the <coughs> results decreases. However, in this case mostly we are discussing the qualitative nature of the flow. So, they of course, remain more or less the same. <coughs> we have seen that the local Mach number distribution on the wedge that is on this part of the with local Mach number distribution, Mach number distribution is independent of m infinity for m infinity just below and above just below and just above of m infinity just above of m infinity equal to 1. That is when the system Mach number is very close to 1 the Mach number distribution on the surface remains the same. <coughs> which we expressed mathematically as d m d m infinity for m infinity equal to 1 is 0. <coughs> now, let us see how this affects the pressure coefficient near Mach number unity. The pressure coefficient is given by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m infinity square by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m square. to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 minus 1. So, this is the pressure coefficient at a point where the local Mach number is m. <coughs> Taking a logarithm this gives log of gamma by 2 m infinity square into C p minus plus 1 equal to gamma by gamma minus 1 log of 2 plus gamma minus 1 m infinity square two plus gamma minus 1 m square. <laughs> Differentiate this with respect to m infinity. Differentiate with m infinity and let m infinity approaches 1. 
this gives then gamma C p star plus gamma by 2 d c p d m infinity m infinity approaching 1 by 1 plus gamma by 2 c p star that is 2 gamma by gamma plus 1. In this, this C p star is C p at m equal to 1. In which this C p star is C p at m infinity equal to 1. <coughs> With this then d c p d m infinity at m infinity equal to 1 4 by gamma plus 1 to 1 minus half Now, at any point where the pressure coefficient is C p that contributes to the drag as C p theta. So, contribution of C p to C d is C p sin theta, where theta is the semi vertex angle of the wedge, which for small theta is C p into theta. <coughs> so, we can now get that d c d d m infinity four theta by gamma plus one minus to C d star by gamma plus 1 and again C d star is C d at m infinity equal to 1. <coughs> so, this <coughs> very simple analysis gives us some indication about the drag curve slope near m infinity. Now, within the small perturbation theory where within the framework of small perturbation theory that is for
by u infinity is much less than 1 and in this case this half C p star is much less than 1. Of course, this result holds for always with very small semi vertex angle as the vertex angle increases the accuracy of this approximation decreases. So, with this approximation with this approximation we have and four theta by gamma plus one. <coughs> so, this is what is the slope of the drug versus Mach number curve near m infinity equal to 1. <coughs> now, if we introduce the transgenic similarity parameter that modified pressure coefficient corresponding to transgenic flow gamma plus 1 m infinity square to the power 1 by 3 by theta C d star is C d into gamma plus 1 m infinity square to the power 1 by 3 sorry theta to the power 2 by 3 and this is theta to the power 5 by 3 and the transonic similarity parameter that is m infinity square minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 into m infinity square into theta to the power 2 by 3. So, if these definitions are introduced here, if these are introduced in these two relations, we get So, that the modified drug coefficient in terms of the transgenic similarity parameter has a slope of 2 at the sonic point, free stream sonic point, of course, and it is found that this result agrees well with a 
experiment for small theta say of the theta is of the order of 10 to 15 degree this result agrees quite well meaning of for a wedge of 20 to 30 degree vertex angle this result compares very well with experimental observation. <coughs> and of course, that validates the transonic similarity theory and as well as transonic small perturbation theory. <coughs> now, once after this discussion, we will now have a brief discussion of transonic flow about airfoils which is of course, of practical interest and perhaps the most important as far as the aerodynamics are concerned. So, <coughs> let us now consider transonic flow about airfoils. Again, let us consider that m infinity increasing from 0 initially up to certain Mach number, let us say as a thumb rule which we have taken as that m infinity less than 0 0.3. this flow is incompressible and we know what is the flow. Of course, they can be treated as compressible subsonic. <coughs> then say we will call this m critical subsonic compressible <coughs> and both can be used by both can be analyzed by linearized theory. linear theory or even linear similarity rule meaning if we think in terms of Prandtl growth rule then once we know the pressure distribution on the airfoil at an incompressible case which corresponds really to Mach number 0, free stream Mach number 0, then of course, at any other Mach number within this range, we can get the pressure coefficient simply by the Prandtl Grot rule which is the C p incompressible divided by <coughs> square root of. So, C p at m infinity is C p incompressible divided by root over 1 minus m infinity square. <coughs> 
when the free stream Mach number reaches m c r l which is lower critical Mach number which we have already defined in our last lecture that m c r l is lower critical Mach number where <coughs> sonic speed is first attained on the airfoil surface at one point. At M C R L, sonic speed is first attained on airfoil surface. This of course, inherently mean that we are considering inviscid flow where the flow slips over the body and as you have seen earlier, the maximum velocity is reached on the surface. <coughs> so, if now in free stream Mach number increases beyond this, then of course, there will be a subsonic region <coughs> on the surface of the air airfoil over certain region and as this Mach number increases the size of this supersonic region increases and this supersonic region terminates with a shock. So, let us consider one such a free stream remember in this discussion we are also considering that the angle of attack is remaining constant, because this lower critical Mach number depends also on the angle of attack as this directly affects the configuration. <coughs> Let us say now this is m infinity and once again let us denote it m infinity 1. So, there will be So, this is shock, this is the sonic line <coughs> just to show for that M sonic speed at this point. <coughs> if the Mach number increase still slightly
now we will have a much larger sonic region And in a viscous flow, there might be even a separation is likely in real viscous flow. This m infinity is of 2 is of course, larger than m infinity 1. <coughs> and it is also possible to have this is super these are all supersonic region Of course, the actual location where this shock will occur and at which Mach number the shock will be relatively weak and sonic region will be little smaller. They of course, change from airfoil to airfoil at and also changes with angle of attack, but qualitatively that as Mach number increases the flow behavior becomes like this. <laughs> Let us now consider a uh, free stream Mach number which is little less than 1 say of the order of 0 0.9 or little higher then of course, the <coughs> and flow separation in real viscous flow
So, in real viscous flow there will be a strong interaction between the shock and the boundary layer and which will affect the location and strength of the shock as well as the growth of the boundary layer. So, here we see that <coughs> there is an interdependence between the shock wave and the boundary layer of course, in real viscous flow in inviscid flow of course, that flow separation and shock boundary layer interaction will not be present. However, as we can see that as Mach number increases <coughs> the supersonic region on the upper surface as well as on the lower surface increases. In all these cases, subsonic free stream as you mentioned that this corresponds to a case where Mach number may be of the order of 0.9 or so <coughs> and So, you see that as the Mach number goes on increasing, free stream Mach number goes on increasing, the supersonic region also increases and consequently the local Mach number also increases and the shocks become stronger. So, with increasing free stream Mach number in shock strength also increases. Because if we recall that shock strength for a normal shock is m 1 square minus 1. <coughs> so, since the upstream Mach number ahead of the shock the Mach number is increased now compared to the earlier cases the shock is much stronger here. So, as this subsonic system Mach number increases towards unity the shock strength goes on increasing <coughs> now let's consider two cases which are just marginally less than So, if we go on increasing this Mach number, when the Mach number comes very close to unity, then <coughs> the shock moves downstream to say near about the trailing edge. Let us say do two cases, if we consider two such cases, very close to unity, one subsonic and other supersonic. let us say this is m infinity say near about 0.95 then the flow over the airfoil is almost entirely supersonic. <coughs> of 
of course, this number has no real significance, it simply implies that Mach number is very close to unity. It of course, depends on configuration to configuration that is the particular geometry of the foil and the angle of attack. Similarly, let us say another case where again Mach number is very close to unity. In this case, as we know that there will be a bow shock wave with a subsonic pocket. These are the sonic line and these are recompression shock. Further higher Mach number see if you have a further higher Mach number then And of course, the recompression shock. This is <coughs> M infinity still M critical upper. <coughs> <coughs> C 
So, we have briefly described the flow behavior or flow pattern in the transonic regime <coughs> and talked about different type of shock appearance at different Mach numbers and particularly this have a tremendous effect on the drag coefficient. Let us say if we plot drag coefficient versus Mach number So, nearly up to critical Mach number, there is hardly any effect of increasing Mach number, the drag coefficient increases marginally. in this part. <coughs> However, after <coughs> the Mach number has crossed the lower critical Mach number, then shock wave appears on the airfoil and drag started increasing very rapidly. and This is called M D D M D D is drag divergence Mach number. Which of course is little higher than critical Mach number. little higher than as is quite obvious that the amongst the two critical Mach number the lower critical Mach number is perhaps more important as in terms of design or <coughs> for aviation and hence usually the critical Mach number is referred to lower critical Mach number. <coughs> As you mentioned that at m critic lower critical Mach number the sonic point is first reached and after that as Mach number increases the there is a supersonic pocket on their foil terminated by a normal shock. So, when the Mach number is increased little bit from lower critical Mach number or critical Mach number, then the shock appears and for once the shock appears that contributes to a rapid increase in drag this and also we have seen that as now Mach number increases the strength of the shock increases 
considerably and of course, the drag rise is <coughs> quite fast and <coughs> this high value of drag. So, <coughs> of course, which we earlier mentioned that in according to linearized theory this would have been infinite. So, very high C D at infinite according to linear theory. this contributed to the myth of sonic barrier. This contributed the myth of sonic barrier. Now, of course, <coughs> aircrafts which wants to operate at high speed, but without going supersonic that is without paying the heavy price of drag rise and fuel price that is for the transport aircraft. The most preferable point of operation is here. this is the preferred operational point of transport aircrafts. <coughs> that is getting the benefit of high speed but without paying the penalty of heavy drag or high drag. <coughs> so, this critical So, we have discussed about the flow over airfoil in the transonic range and we have seen how the supersonic region appears first in the upper surface then consequently on the lower then subsequently on the lower surface as well and then the shock moves downstream towards the trailing edge point when the Mach number reaches very close to unity and <coughs> downstream of these trailing edge shock the flow again becomes subsonic. Even in this case also this region uh, here is a subsonic region in these cases as well a subsonic region is present here. and here also and then of course, up a little downstream <coughs> the flow become as the free stream is supersonic that little downstream in these cases also the flow becomes supersonic. Somewhere here and <coughs> so these also belongs to that transonic flow region
we also have indicated a possible shock boundary layer interaction and separation and rapid growth in boundary layer thickness for a real viscous flow and <coughs> with this we have discussed how the rapid drag rise. So, in this case a rapid rise in drug coefficient due to shock <coughs> and we also have defined what is the divergence drag divergence Mach number where the shock wave becomes started contributing largely to the drag coefficient that becomes the drag divergence Mach number. <coughs> Now, it is very important to particularly estimate this lower critical Mach number because that more or less fixes the preferred operational point or cruising speed of a particular aircraft. Of course, as you have mentioned earlier that the lower critical Mach number changes with the airfoil shape and airfoil angle of attack. <coughs> so, we will briefly describe how we can have a preliminary approximate estimate of lower critical Mach number <coughs> and anyway we will consider that in our next lecture the estimation of lower critical Mach number. <coughs> so, with this we <coughs> conclude. in our next lecture we will discuss about lower estimation of lower critical Mach number approximately. <coughs>